Welcome everyone to the Teleadvisors August 2023 webinar. The title for the webinar today is What Standard Is That? Uh, I acknowledge the Aranda people of Mabantwe, Alice Springs, the traditional owners of the land that I live, work and learn and I pay respects to elders past and present. I extend that respect to the Indigenous colleagues that are with us today. So I'd like to uh, pause just to enable the recording people. And I will introduce the second presenter who's Don McGrath, the Teaching and Learning Manager Institute for Teaching and Learning Innovation at University of Queensland, Australia. UQ's Digital Threshold Teaching Standards, uh, DTTS, were developed in response to concerns about the quality of online teaching in the rapid response to COVID. This initiative threatened to become like a punitive quality assurance focused audit, all those words dashed together, but was manoeuvred into a process built on appreciative collegial conversation identifying enhancements to individual courses, enhancing staff networks, and providing evidence for institutional support. So Dom's presentation will explore these processes and possibly briefly display the standards. Over to you, Dom, and you can enable your video. Thanks, Wendy. Um, as mentioned, I'm Dom McGrath from the Institute for Teaching and Learning Innovation here at the University of Queensland. And I'll be attempting to share and hopefully give evidence to all of the interesting parts of the story of putting together these UQ digital teaching threshold standards over the past few years. So I'd like to start with an acknowledgement of country um, and recognize that UQ acknowledges the traditional owners and their custodianships on the lands in which we meet. The first thing I'd like to do though, before digging into the story is acknowledge a lot of the people who did the work on this. And when I started listing people out, I realized I couldn't fit them all on the slide, let alone say things um, and acknowledge all the great work that went into this. Um, the two people, well, a couple of people I will acknowledge is Dr. Greg Winslet, who's our Deputy Director of Digital Learning here at the University of Queensland, who led this work. Um, Dr. Emerson Lee, who is here, who added a lot of the intellectual depth and rigor to this project, along with Associate Professor Jason Lodge. Um, and then we had, I had the absolute pleasure of working with most of the people here on this screen, some of whom are here, uh, to help make this project happen. So a little bit about the need for our digital teaching threshold standards and why we ended up there. Um, if you have a soft spot for silly stock imagery, which I do, um, you may enjoy searching for things like digital teaching and find images like this one, uh, which show digital teaching as something a little bit like the minority report, but with strangely less people. And I think some people had this pervasive belief around what digital teaching is. Through COVID, we saw articles such as this one and the experience for many staff and students looking far more like frustration in isolation, looking at computers. And it was newsworthy that online teaching and designing online classes wasn't as easy as it sounds. Um, not that it sounded easy to me in the first place, and I assume for most of you, it probably didn't sound easy either. Um, and many people here have got incredible experience in this space. So in this context, UQ senior governing body raised concerns about how we assure the quality of digital teaching through this emergency shift to online teaching and learning. And the digital teaching threshold standards were developed as a response to this concern. So one of the first things we we struggled with, apologies for this odd sharing the screen, was what should we have the digital teaching threshold standards for? And I think the presentation before highlighted the range of standards and challenges there. So I'd like to poll you and ask, what should we focus on when developing standards? Should they be universal or exceptional? Should they be focused on teaching or technology, quality assurance, quality enhancement? Should they be future focused or retrospective, generic or specific? And as I've highlighted here, um, these are really false dichotomies. Sometimes we can have more, but could I ask you to indulge me and respond to the poll and identify which options you would pick?
big scale. Um, so rosemary hygiene is a word that slipped into my vocabulary from some people in our IT teams who talk about um, privacy and digital practices that meet minimum standards and make sure things are working safe and healthy and in a healthy way. Um, so I'd tie that with universal standards that apply to everything. Okay, so I'm going to stop this poll and hopefully share the results. Um, and as Kate mentioned, it was hard and I think it's a little unfair to try and divide some of these things out and hopefully in a lot of our work we get to do both of them for each of these things, but we often have to choose a focus um, and I'm delighted to see that it was difficult and that there's a contentious range of options. So I can't see the results yet, Dom. Oh, no. I hit the share results again. Share results. So is that sharing for everyone? I can't see it on the screen. Yep. Yeah, so some people are. Um, I'll quickly run through it. The universal, aspirational, exceptional was very tightly tied, very 50-50. 85% 50. Um, people went teaching focused over technology focused. 68% um, about two thirds for quality enhancement over quality insurance, 94% um, future focused and 64% went specific over generic. So that's where we ended up. Okay, I'm gonna have to pick up my pace. So after we considered what are our standards actually for, we hit that problem of, well, if that's what we're trying to do, are standards the right answer? Is that the right thing to do? There's a whole heap of other things we do that might actually be better for trying to have a future focused enhancement of course teaching or the way people are presenting or using different tools. It may be better to support people to work with student partners or engage in scholarship with teaching and learning or with the community of practice, or maybe we need a better learning management system if we want to achieve the goals we wanted. Uh, but we decided there was a space for us for the digital teaching threshold standards and we continued. Uh, they called the DTTS because they're digital, um, focused on the bits of teaching that we haven't been doing as much over the 100 plus years of having the University of Queensland. We wanted to focus more on the teaching aspects. We're interested in students' experience. Um, they were threshold because we wanted to look at that universal, getting everyone over the line of the things that we need to have happen, or we thought we needed to have happen, and standards to really focus and be specific about what we wanted to look at. So my attempt at that uneasy set of dichotomies was that we were more focused on hygiene and universal, a bit more on teaching focused. We really tried to balance between quality assurance and quality enhancement. We were retrospective in looking at the courses that have happened, hopefully to aid things in the future, but that's what we looked at with the standards um, and that were very generic across the university. So when we're developing the standards, uh, we had an incredible scan across the universe, uh, across different universities, what was happening around the world. And I have to acknowledge Emma as leading the work in this space. Uh, we explored standards across Canada, the US, the UK, and Australasia. Um, when I put this on a map like this, it showed a certain bias that we have at our university. Um, we also had a look at Quality Matters, TELUS, and a range of those other standards that are out there and dug into what was happening in other places to try and inform our own standards. In looking at these, we realized there wasn't something that was quite right for UQ. We wanted to bring in a range of local ideas. We have a higher education learning framework, policy, other aspects that we wanted to see fit in. I know, I'm sorry about New Zealand not fitting on this map. So the standards fit into eight sections with 25 specific standards. I promise to show them almost subliminally on screen. There are not surprises in amongst them. These were the eight areas that we looked at. And course scaffolding, usability and structure, communication materials, interaction, collaboration, accessibility and inclusivity, copyright, student support and assessment and feedback. Um, so I'm gonna leave these up for only a couple of seconds and note that if you wanna have a look at them in more depth, hopefully they'll be in the recording and I'm also happy to send copies of these around. So as hinted in the introduction, the area that I was particularly interested in is that process for implementing standards. How do you take these things and use them with people in a productive way? And so I'd like to ask another question in chat. What experience do you want for your course teams when engaging with standards? So could I, ask for a word to three words about that type of experience or what you would like it to be like for people to engage with these standards. 
And you might be inspired or not inspired at all by the couple of images I've picked, ranging from this hard-hitting interrogation through to the, the friendly checkup. There's some great words coming through. Thanks, Amy, for empowered, Claire for collaborative, Charlotte for meaningful, supportive, clear, and aspirational. Traction hands, really appreciate that. We'd like to see something actually happen. Yeah, we want to encourage willingness to collaborate, a way forward. Yep. Um, Karina, the relief and assurance about being on the right track. Awesome. Yes, these are all, all really good things. Um, one of the challenges we had, though, was also coming back to that quality assurance focus at the start of, are people on the right track? Can the university be assured that people are on the right track? Which sometimes, I think it's hard to get all of these things together. One of the challenges for this is always which courses, which people, which things get reviewed. Um, and a big part of how that experience sets up is how you start and how you get put into this. We had a range of volunteer courses, which gave us a great start. But with volunteers putting their hands up and saying, I'd love to do this, you're unlikely to reach the scale uh, to address the concerns raised by our senior leadership. Across the sector, one of the biggest challenges I've noticed at the moment, I think is pretty universal, is the workload and the challenges of people being able to find time to do a lot of the things they want to do and core things as part of their work, adding on another review process on top and delegating this without that awareness of workload can be incredibly challenging. So with this program, we ended up being advised to focus on online only courses and we're guided by faculty and university leadership to identify people who hopefully had courses in this space and the time to engage, but sometimes it was complex. To make this process work, we looked for evidence of meeting the specific standards that were outlined um, and to work with the course team to undertake this review. Given the demands of time, we tried to keep everything down to two hours to review and identify actions moving forward. I think we hit this mark with almost every review we did in the pilots and initial processes. Some people looked at multiple courses with it once, um, which they enabled a little bit of more efficiency if those courses were very similar. We also explored a range of implementations, ultimately keeping a two reviewer process, one gen being generally a learning designer, if given a very broad definition of learning designer, and the other being a member of the course team. We tried in-person, virtual and virtual working bees, individual meetings, asynchronous reviews, um, one learning designer working with multiple courses, and all of these processes seem to have their space, a favourites being a synchronous collaborative review between two people. But as we move forward, I think we'll keep doing a little bit of everything just based on the availability and options around. Uh, the initial version worked in Excel, looking at standards, um, recording them, then manually moving them around. I have the luxury of working with an absolutely incredible learning analytics team here who developed a dashboard system for us, which enables collaborative review, um, holds guidance alongside to support people around what the actual standards mean and keep track of things as they move through. Yeah, thanks, Kate. Um, which is also supported by eLearning Solutions Service. So we have some great guides online as well. Um, that team was also responsible for a lot of the integrating our standards into our online materials, training materials, workshops, um, and our, our templates for digital teaching to make sure it was as easy as possible for people to meet our standards. And I have to acknowledge Hong Nguyen and El Siddiqui for a lot of that work. So the outcome of all of this, um, I thought it was much more successful than I expected. Uh, no one has brought me a confetti cannon yet, and I haven't got a mirror ball to celebrate with. But most people who engage in this project left feeling like it was done with them rather than to them, which I think was the big risk of the project as we went forward. Some of our pilot participants responded that I think using the standards as a starting point for conversation and building a collaborative relationship with learning designers at EQ is a far better use of a checklist rather than simply having a checklist to compare to a standard. And I think this building of relationships and seeing that positive way forward was a really awesome outcome for what started as concerns around quality assurance. Moving forward, our biggest challenge is scale. Um, we don't have a lot of unallocated blocks of course team time or learning design time and making these reviews happen on a broader scale and the implementation of these standards is gonna to continue to be a challenge. 
Next, we are working with faculties to identify and prioritize what courses and processes they'd like with continued central support. The actual standards and that collaborative process itself seems to be holding strong, and we expect these reviews to continue in a pretty similar way into the years going forward. Thanks, everyone. If there's any questions, please throw them in. Thanks so much, Dom. Great presentation. And yeah, I'd uh, as you said, it's it's a bit of a journey, but I particularly liked the um, focus on being able to provide a little bit of everything in the different formats that you're working with going forward. So please show your appreciation uh, to Dom in the chat. There's lots coming through there or through the reactions. And uh, just also a shout out to Kate Mitchell, who's in the audience, um, because she was uh, the presenter, one of the presenters for the very first Teleadvisors webinar series, and it was on this subject.